Okay. Welcome, Jesse. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. You're doing well this morning? Yes. Oh, I can Hello, see you. Nicole. How are you doing, Nicola? Happy Mother's Day. Uh, Jesse and Nicola. They are the beautiful little ones. Oh, yes. They are busy, busy little people. Oh, yeah, my dear. Yeah. <laughs> are they in school? Do they, do they get into school? Uh, so we still have one more thing to do. It's it's just a little bit intensive for an application process from anything I've ever seen. But <laughs> yeah, we've got one more thing on um, the twentieth, I think, and then I'll then I'll know. So okay, yeah. all right. Yeah. Let me know. Uh, you know keep me informed. Uh, Brian, how are you feeling? I'm better. You miss the burgers thing. are here. Pardon me. Seeing the burgers are here. Oh, okay. <laughs> I love the burgers. <laughs> Good morning, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Good. Good. Morning. Good. How are you doing, Sid? Good. How are y'all doing? Good. We're doing okay. Good. 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 Still cold here. Still cold. In New York, for those. Still cold. Okay. Um, it's still cold in New York, is it? It's still, it's still cold. It's still a bit chilly. Um, like we still have to wear a jacket to go up. Mm -hmm. All right. Today is a good day here. Some it's, you'll never mm -hmm. know when it's going to be cold and when it's hot, but mm -hmm. it's here. <laughs> Brother Gato, how are you doing? How is the Freeport? How is not Freeport? But how is the Bahamas? Oh, the Bahamas is still here. Seven hundred islands. <laughs> they haven't Golden. reduced the islands as yet. <laughs> I didn't hear you there. We have not reduced the number of islands. Oh no, no, no. No, and we don't want it to be reduced. No. <laughs> Good to see you, Brother Gator. Uh, Lisa is on. Lisa, how are you doing? Hey, thank you. That was how a powerful it? message this morning, Lisa. It was. Thank it's a preach on Mother's Day this morning. Mm -hmm. Very encouraging. All right. Um, we're going to start in a few minutes, just, uh, just a couple of minutes, and then we're going to make a start. Give me one minute. Shai? Okay, I, I get on your mom too. Did you mute when you went to no, no. All right, um, let, me, let me give you an update, some quick updates. And then I would pray and then Dr. Ken will share a meditation and then everybody will have a chance to participate based on the email that I sent out. Um, Benji was hoping to log on today. He is going to have a procedure on Monday and he asked for our prayers. He's going in the hospital in South Carolina. I think it's a one. Is that him? No, that's Cheyenne. Okay, um, just just remember him in prayer. Also, I want to and see Cheyenne is on. Let me comment that congratulations to Cheyenne. She's graduating with her BS degree on Saturday. She was good at BSing, but no, now she's getting it, making it all fit. Thank you. I'm glad, Cheyenne. Thank you. I'm glad, Cheyenne. Thank you. Um, I also want to say to Bubba, um, Bubba and Dolores, on um, May the 14th, is that Friday, Bubba? Is this anniversary? And so I want to... Friday. It's on Friday. On Friday. Friday, Bubba and Miss Dolores will be celebrating their anniversary. want to wish them <laughs> happy anniversary. Is Bubba sick? Happy anniversary, Bubba. Yes. And um, uh, is there any, uh, uh, we're going to pray for all these. Uh, is there any other announcement, anything that anybody, Jesse and Nicola, it's so good to see you. Anything you want to say before we, uh, well, you get a chance to say something, but anything in terms of announcement, prayer requests or so? Not at the moment right now. Things are looking pretty good. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank We're you. Well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, keep Keep the ministry in in, um, in India um, in prayers. Um, right now, it can't function. So school is shut down, and the 
in the church services yeah. are not allowed. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, we do that. Definitely. And I'm Kenya. I don't see Zephaniah on this morning. I don't know what his progress has been with the COVID, but uh, I'm sure I get a text from him later in the day. Well, that is him coming up there uh, from Kenya, East Africa. Maybe wait until he comes on and tells us what's going on over there. Uh, Vince, uh, uh, the COVID in the Bahamas is going down, right? Oh no, no, it continues to rise and uh, regrettably, uh, as I suppose in every other metropolitan state or city, persons are not doing the due diligence in terms of trying to remain safe and social distancing, even there in, in the community of North Andra, where I am. Yeah. Uh, it is getting worse by the by the day. Oh boy! Well, let's remember that in prayer too. Zeb, what's happening in Kenya? Oh, oh, good, 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 good afternoon, everybody. Good, we are doing well in Kenya. Uh, everybody is fine, and and we just, we are just thanking God for, for for what He has done in our lives. Okay. All right. Good. Like I said, let's you can remember. Hear us, right? Let's remember Benji and prayer and all the other things. All right. You'll be on mute by the next okay. one. Um. Let me also, before we pray, wish and all, all like Jeff and I and others wish uh, all the mothers a very happy Mother's Day and trust that you spend this day. With happiness, with joy. And uh, still in this Miriam. Uh, Mary is on. Uh, Mary Friday. is not online. Mary's Friday is on the phone, but she's hearing. She can't see all of us, but she can hear us uh, for the service. Oh, all right, that's pretty. Lord, for your goodness and your grace, we thank you. For your presence, we thank you. Thank and you, for Jesus. all the mothers all around the world. Lord, we pray that you will strengthen them. You'll continue to give them grace and love and compassion and all the qualities that come from you that they have inherited. But they will spread that, those qualities throughout the world and make this world a better place. I pray that you will be in our midst today in this service, that you will speak to us individually that you will touch our hearts. We pray for Benji, Lord, Jesus. even as he goes in for that procedure on Monday, that you will guide the hands of the doctors and the care of the nurses yes. and all the hospital staff, Jesus. that he will walk out refreshed, renewed mm -hmm. in his body, in his mind, in oh, his heart, and in his spirit. Jesus. Touch Benji, we pray. We pray for Baba and Mr. Loris as they celebrate this anniversary, that you will bless them at this time for their anniversary, that their hearts will be encouraged. Guide us, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Azen, good to see you. Happy Mother's Day. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, yeah, this time it is my pleasure is that this? Yeah. 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 At this time, it's my pleasure to uh, welcome Dr. Ken Ramphill from Canada. Uh, let me say a quick word about Dr. Ken. Um, he, his uh, submission to Reader's Digest for publication was just accepted. So we want to congratulate him on that publication in Reader's Digest. And his, uh, is this your fourth? Well, he will tell you. I think it's his fourth novel is supposed to come out sometime within the next month. But I'm going to hand the service straight over to him at this time. Dr. Ken. Morning. 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 Happy, happy Mother's Day to everybody. I'm being a father myself. Forgive me, mothers, but happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Because without you, there would be no mothers. 
<laughs> it's difficult for me to talk with mothers, and I suspect it's the same with all of you, without talking about my own mother. I Google it, and I can quote a lot of poets and authors who talk about mothers, but none of those quotes would be as relevant to you as your own mothers and your own experiences with your mothers. Because of this, I think it would be more appropriate if you can devote much of the time allotted to me to talk about your own mothers. Dwarka always talked about the influence I had on him in the past and now. But the fact is our mothers influence us all had the most significant influence on all of us. We went around saying that Ma couldn't read or write, but you know something she wrote and she read and wrote Hindi fluently and kept all her records in Hindi. Well, because she couldn't read and write English, which was the prominent language, we went around saying she couldn't read and write. But she was determined that all her children will get will be educated. And she made all kinds of sacrifices because she didn't she didn't want us to work in the sugarcane field. I can remember one time of the table studying and she came upstairs and she looked at me and she went back downstairs. And next thing I heard was the sound of the axe hitting the wood. She was splitting firewood. Joella, yes, I did go down and I did take the ax from her and did the ax work. But just to show you how committed she was. I believe that the purest love, really believe that the purest love one human being can have for another is a mother's love for a child, which will never die. Matthew 19.14 tells us that the mothers brought their children to Jesus to be blessed and they were turned away by the disciples. But Jesus said, Suffer the little children and forbid them not to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of heaven. Now, note that the mothers did not ask to be blessed by Jesus but they asked that their children be blessed. Mothers are life-sustaining, and it's no wonder why so many cultures use the term mother in life-sustaining roles. We call the earth Mother Earth. In the Hindu religion, people talk about Mother Lakshmi, the mother of all light and knowledge. The sacred river in India, Ganges, is called Ganga Mata, Mother Ganges. I can go on and on, but I know that you all have stories to tell. If you can share, I know, don't go on as long as I did, in one or two sentences, perhaps. Your experiences with your mothers and what they mean to you, it will be appreciated. Again, please keep it short so that everybody will have a chance to share. I will leave the floor open now for anybody who would like to share. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to manage that a little bit. I'm going to start with Zanya, open her microphone, and then I'm going to go to Lawrence there uh, to say just two sentences. And uh, then we're going to go around the room. If you want to pass, if you don't want to say anything, just say pass. But then if you start, please. Okay, so um, my mother, of course, is pretty much the center of our family. Um, she is the one that keeps us going. Um, she's the one that we know, uh, and my brother would, would agree if uh, he was here, is the one that prays for us without ceasing um, and mm -hmm. tells us all about it. Um, she also guides us in, in many different ways and um, our spiritual rock. Thank you, Mom. Love you. Lawrence, if you want to say something. Quinnett. Dr. Quinnett. 
Hello. Don't quite know what I'm going to say, except that I'm immensely grateful for my mother. Um, she's uh, the one who um, was the uh, kind of spiritual head of our household and um, just saw us, all of me and my siblings through uh, ups and downs and um, just kept believing in us. Everybody, thank you. Remind you, everybody, that Sonia raised uh, four children as a single mother, and two of them have doctorates, and one is an officer in the Air Force, and the other one is doing very well in business. Uh, from there, I'm going to go to Floyd, and then Lisa, and then Bubba, if you have anything you want to say. Good morning, everyone. Um, I can't say much because I I've lost my mom a couple of years ago, but I just want to say Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there, and especially in this call, Happy Mother's Day to you all. God bless you. I just want to say I thank and I praise God for my mother. Uh, when I was young and started going astray, going in a contrary direction. Um, my mother had the audacity to find a church that was open seven days a week. And out of six kids, she drugged me there every day, every day of the week. But I thank God for it. And I thank God for her having a mind to make sure that I was in church no matter what. Bubba, I'm then shy after that. Bubba, anything you want to say? Yes, uh, well, my mother, she passed in 2004, but uh, she raised her, raised us by herself, so did. And uh, I just thank her for everything she had to do for me. And um, she told me, say, son, because I was the quiet one, she said, son, you better start talking more than you talking. So that's about it for me. Um, first, I want to say a happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there, um, but a special happy Mother's Day to my mom and to my nanny. Um, first, thank you to both of you for making me into the woman that I am today. I know that I have some great qualities from both of you, and just thank you for everything that you've done for me. Um, I really, really appreciate you, appreciate you guys more than you'll ever know. But uh, happy Mother's Day to everyone. Thank you, Shai. Uh, Brother Zeff, then I'm going to ask Vince, uh, Apostle Gator and then Joella. Uh, uh, th thank you very much. Uh, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Uh, my mother, who is now 89, one attribute that I can say about her is that she was a very strict disciplinarian. My father was very, very soft and, uh, and it was very possible for us to, for, for her nine, nine children to slip into other things. But because my mama was very strict as a disciplinarian, she made us what she is and, and we remained grateful to her because uh, without her, or, or probably would not have made it to the levels that we did. Thank you very much. Yeah. Just want to express and convey to all of you mothers uh, that's associated with the New Millennium Ministry and indeed to, to Sister Rita, a wonderful Mother's Day greetings and blessing to you all. May the power of your mighty God continue to give you the strength and the tenacity to continue to be the woman of God that he has called you to be. And indeed, uh, just two, two years now since I lost my mom, my mom was certainly a pillow, a tower of strength within our family helping to raise uh, very own children and then some of her, 
her grandchildren and great-grandchildren. So uh, it is my prayer that God continues to, to grant each and every one of you the strength, but more importantly to you who are children, who are grandchildren, the godly counsel and wisdom of God grant peace, joy, and strength as you continue to journey on. And Dr. Ken, thank you very much for your know, what the encouragement. Joel, if you can hold for a minute, let me take a moment to welcome Brother uh, Reverend Vincent Brown from Florida, I think. Yeah, Florida. Welcome, my brother. We're going to hear from you in a few minutes. So we're going to have Joel, and then we're going to have Jesse and Nicola then Brian, and then go to New York. Joella. I'm struggling today because this is my first Mother's Day without Mama, so it's not good today. So happy Mother's Day to everybody. Thank you, Joella. Let's keep praying for her. Jesse and then Nicola. I guess when you become a mother, you have a different appreciation for your own for your own mother. And more and more, when I I look back, I just, I just nothing but gratitude. I was never hungry, and my mom is the one who showed showed me how to be a friend. She she was the person that you know, mom, my projects do, and I can't get it done. And and I remember her staying up till midnight to make sure my stuff was done. And and now I look back and I say, oh, gosh, like you just, you know, you like you say that that love is so pure that, you know, you would lose sleep to make sure your child wasn't worried and stressed and scared or afraid. And <laughs> now I just I'm, I'm thankful that she showed me that. And now I get to show that to my own children. And you draw so much from what your mother did to then give to your own. And it, 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 a lot of reflection and, and gratitude for me, for my for my mother. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Nicola. Jesse? Yeah. I'm going to just go ahead and pass on this one. <laughs> Thank you, Jesse. Uh, Brian, Brian? Yeah, Jesse can't pass. <laughs> but anyway, um, Joelle has, again, got it tough. It's her first Mother's Day without. Uh, my mom uh, um, was the last of the significant ladies in my life to pass, and that was 21 years ago and um you know when we're young we don't realize what we have in front of us you know as nicola said it's later in life that we've come to appreciate it and my mother's been dead and gone 21 years and she's still the smartest person in the room and she still gets smarter every day and um i wish i had um appreciated it more and held on to more back then instead of now but um, you know, mothers are special people. When, even when they're not here, they're here. Yes. And um, I just want the ones that y'all that are here and the mothers that step in and take the place when our mothers are gone, I appreciate it very much because I got me a dozen or so in this group. And um, I just want to say I appreciate it to everybody. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you. And I see Reverend Brown has to leave. Um, Oh, I just left. I was going to ask him if he wanted to say anything before, but uh, he's from Florida and he has another service. All right, go ahead, New York. Yeah, you know, when you have a lot of siblings, it's hard to get some personal time with your mother. But, and I have eight. But um, I remember um, a long time ago, I and mean, she died a long time ago, um, when we moved in here, I was kind of like, scared suddenly um, and was getting a lot of nightmares and I told her, I called her and I told her about it, you know, maybe I was like suffering from a little uh, depression or drifting away from my faith and you know what my mother said to me, you hold on to your Bible, you keep reading your Bible, it works for you. Now I don't know why she said that but she was very, very serious about it. She said, you hold on to your Bible. She pointed me right back to where I have, should have gone in the first place. And I thank her for it today. It does work for me. Thanks. Thank you, sis. Okay. Well, our mothers are very precious to us. 
Um, she is the first person that would give us something to eat or drink. And she would be the only person, our fathers would walk away, but she would be the only person to wipe our butt. <laughs> <laughs> I thank her very much, and I thank all mothers. <laughs> thank you. Ken? Um, I don't know how my mother handled the birth of 16 kids. You agree. And then raised 13 of us because they, the, um, um, three of them died um, as babies. Um, being in Chinese family, uh, they, they say behind every successful man is a good woman. Um, and you know, the book of Proverbs bears that out. Um, uh, my mom dedicated me at birth to the Lord. I was born on a Sunday morning at six, the church bell rang, and my mother said, this one belongs to the Lord. And so here I am today, yes, a minister, I'm not Catholic, a, a priest as she thought would have happened, but yet I'm a minister in the gospel of Christ. Um, I can remember my mom uh, we were, at the time we were manufacturing ice boxes before refrigerators came in. And she was spraying the ice box. She was spraying one of the ice boxes because she sprayed the ice boxes for three years. And um, uh, she was holding the spray gun and then she said, um, I think I have a problem. And what she did, she, she put the spray gun down and she went into the house and said, call the nurse. She was going to have another baby. So here she was, she's spraying an ice box and, and she was just ready to go and give birth. <laughs> and so that's the kind of dedication she had as a mom with 13 kids. Um, and yet she still found some kind of time for each of us in one form or another. Um, and so I want to say dedication, blessings to all the mothers today um, that we have around. You are very precious people, though you don't get to hear it very often or often enough. Um, I, I do remember my pastor had one habit and we were always many times around when he would practice this and he would ask his wife, he'd say, Mama, have I told you lately that I love you? And she'd say, no, you haven't. <laughs> she'd say, he'd say, I, I want to remind you, I sure do love you. But the one thing I heard her say one day, uh, she would, he would say to her, Mama, I think I'm loving you too much. And she answered him and said, when you love me more than Jesus loved the church, you're loving me too much. Well, there was a bit of silence there. Yes. <laughs> and so I just want to say, yes, let's love our mothers um, as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Thank you very much, Ken. And Sonia, was there anything you wanted to say? Yes, I would like to say, I, you know, today I spent some time thinking about my own mom. And although she was a very quiet person, she set a beautiful example before me. And I remember the last time she visited me here, uh, I told her, thank you for the beautiful example, but I really cannot follow it. And she laughed because she knew exactly what part of the example I was referring to. Uh, she didn't say a lot. And, but, you know, you knew what she expected and, um, you know, she, she loved her children very much and she sacrificed a lot for us. Um, I didn't realize until much later how much she had sacrificed for her children. And I don't think all of us really appreciate it as much as we should. I know I didn't. And I'm still trying to do that, even though she's passed a couple of years ago. But I thank God for her and I thank God for her willingness to do the sacrifices for us, even though we may not have appreciated them. Thank you. Thank you, Sonia. Uh, Lauren, I'm going to ask Lawrence uh, later about what was it that you couldn't follow, but I think Lawrence would be happy to talk about that then. <laughs> but um, 
Um, before I hand over to Rita, uh, I just want to, you know, incidentally, Dr. Ken and Barbara and I, we have the same mother. <laughs> so uh, the two words I can think about to describe her would be love and compassion. And as I reflect on her, and the Bible doesn't talk a lot about mothers, except, you know, it was a patriarchal society. So we, we pray to our father strength and power and authority and provision. But one prophet, the prophet Isaiah, saw a different side of God's love. And when I think of that, I remember my mother or our mother. The prophet Isaiah wanted, wanting to uh, show how much God loves his children, even when they go astray, said this, he said, can a mother forsake her suckling child in describing God's love. And then Isaiah said, even though she may, yet will I love you, says the Lord. So God's love is depicted as a mother's love, but even greater than a mother's love, superior to a mother's love. That even though earthly mothers may, in a rare occasion, forsake their children, God will never forsake us. He loves us as much as or more than a mother does. And I thought that, you know, we didn't hear much about it, but um, Celine Dion, Ken, uh, Dr. Ken from Canada, wrote a wonderful prayer song, a prayer, a mother's prayer for children. Um, and for those in the Caribbean, the Mighty Sparrow, of course, sang a wonderful song about Mother's love for children, and there are others. I think earlier we talked about Sunder Pope and a few others in the Caribbean who sang about mother's love. But with that, I hand over to uh, Rita. Uh, happy Mother's Day again to every woman on the line, whether you have nurtured or by natural birth or just nurtured children around you. It contributes to the characteristics of motherhood. And I just want to say happy Mother's Day to you. And as I said to my brother-in-law and those who, men who were on the line earlier, happy Mother's Day to all you fathers who have fathered your children without a mother's presence. Um, we know that Anna Marie Javis is the one who had started the tradition of Mother's Day because she wanted to honor her own mother. And that has become a national, not a national holiday, but a, a national celebration for mothers in so many different parts of the world. Here in, I think it was 1907 that they had started it. Um, but regardless of when it was started, for those of us that are Christians, for those of us who are deep religionists, I've realized that in every religion, they have honored mothers, even though women were not given prominent positions in different, in different environments, because they were always counted as the weaker sex. We still realize that the strength of women was always recognized because without them, societies would fail, household will fail, organizations would fail, doesn't matter what. Many, many failures in the world have resulted because of a lack of a strong woman behind it. And if you would go back from the beginning of times, from where when God see that Adam could not function by himself, had created woman for a specific purpose. Rudra last Thursday evening had read a wonderful poem about mothers. I will not read that poem today because I, what I've chosen to talk to us about is definitely our poor personal experiences. The Bible is filled, Dwarka said, that women were not honored in the Bible, probably not so, but still we have very many biblical examples of the strength and character of women. And I, for those of you 
who are Christians. If you read the Bible, you will find it. As my brother-in-law said, coming from basically uh, a Hindu religion background, there's so much of the names that are given to all the deities as mother, and even to the earth that produce so much that is called Mother Earth. It's a great recognition of the quality of women and the strength of women and the way that God has put woman in a very prominent position to be, to be recognized. The Bible does not directly address the holiday of Mother's Day in its verses, but often addresses the celebration of motherhood and mothers. However, if we adhere to the teachings of the Holy Scriptures, we will not only celebrate Mother's Day on this special Sunday in May, but we will treasure our mothers and keep them in our hearts and thoughts always. The fact is, from the time we were conceived within her, the bond of her favor, her wisdom, her strength, her love, her tenderness, her care, her compassion, and all that she is gravitates towards each one of us to make sure that we become the people we ought to be. And I really want you to take note of every bit of those words. They were not, they were not born from out of somebody's writing, but it's a way that I feel in my own heart as a mother. It is what mothers do for kids. It is the way mothers feel towards their own children that they bring into the world. And sometimes when we discipline, it feels as though we don't care and we don't understand and we don't love, but it's because we care, because we love, because we understand, because we have been in your shoe when you're young and growing up and we did make some of the same mistakes. We try to help you not to make those mistakes. Now that I am older, I realize that all young people are going to make certain mistakes as they grow older. It does not take away from a mother's wisdom, heart's love and desire to allow herself to say, please don't. But I want you to remember that when we say, please don't, it's not because we want to control your life but it's because we want to advise you not to make the mistakes that we have made. It was Mary who felt that joy within her spirit when she knew that the Lord, the angel told her that she was going to bring forth a son and that they will call his name Jesus. Mary did not run around the community just telling everybody about this vision that she had. But she said, my soul doth magnify the Lord and my spirit doth rejoice in God, my savior. For he has looked upon the humble estate of this his handmaid. And for behold, now I all generations shall be blessed because of me. And that's the way a woman feels when she finds that conception has taken place within her. The joy that it brings to her, it makes her feel that whatever is going to come out from her must be a blessing to the world that she is placed in. And that is why a woman, all that she is gravitates to make her child the best that the child could be. For noble mothers, the happiness, the joys, the successes, the growth and health and stability and maturity of that child are some of the things that give her greatest satisfaction and enthusiasm. A great noble woman does not look to see how much money her child is going to bring to her, does not look to see how, how what my child is going to do for me, but that woman reaches out to say, 
this is what I want for my child. My child must become mature. My child must grow up to be a blessing. My child must be successful. My child must be full of joy. My child must enjoy success and growth and stability and health. That is what a great mother looks forward to. And when a child becomes that, it is what makes a woman happy, satisfied, joyful. I feel like jumping all the time, not because of what I have, but because of my family. And I'm thankful to God for the blessings that he has given to me in my family, my children, my grandchildren, my husband, and for those that I've known. I can say this, that this is how I feel. When, when, when that family is so strong, I can look back at three women in my life. My mother was one of those women. My grandmother was one of those women. And my mother-in-law was one of those women. Those three women in my life are the ones that make me feel the joy of motherhood. They have enabled me to be a better wife, a better mother, and a better woman. And I'm so thankful for the life of my mother, my grandmother, and my mother-in-law. The Bible says that strength and dignity are their clothing. They laugh when their family is feeling happy. They open their mouth with wisdom. They have the teaching of kindness on their tongue. Wherever they go, they teach you to be kind. They teach you to help others. They teach you to love. They teach you to care. This is what those three women have taught me. And according to Proverbs chapter 31, they are called virtuous. They are virtuous women. And I'm thankful for that. The Bible says they look to the needs of their household and their lips are not idle. Idleness, they do not eat. The bread of idleness, they put away. A gracious woman gets honor. Hear my son, my fa your father's instruction, says Proverbs chapter one. But forsake not your mother's teaching for they are a graceful garland for your head and, pre and a pendant for your neck. Forsake not the teaching of your mother. Only take care and keep your soul diligently, lest you forget the things that your eyes have seen, and lest you depart from your heart all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and to your children's children. When Jesus therefore saw his mother in John chapter 19 and the disciples standing by whom he loved, who was Mary's son, John, he said unto, him, unto John, he said unto the woman, behold your son, that's Mary. And he said unto that disciple, John, behold your mother. And from that hour, John took his mother home unto his own house. When you think about what your mother wants for Mother's Day, remember that most mothers do not want things, but they want affection. And this is not a, a one day celebration as a child, a husband, a father, or whoever we are to celebrate a mother. It's not a one day celebration but a life that exemplifies attitude with gratitude. The best Mother's Day card is the one that is written from the language of the heart and expressed by our affections in actions. May we continue to celebrate mothers who are mothers indeed, for some men have never given birth to a child, but like Mother Teresa, who has spent her life to give joy, help, care, compassion, and stability to nurture the poor, the outcasts, and the neglected. These women have expressed the characteristics of motherhood. So for everyone who reaches out to nurture those whom you can reach, happy, happy, happy Mother's Day. Thank God you. bless all of us. Thank you, Rita. Mm -hmm.
Um, in a few moments, I'm going to ask Dr. Ken for some closing comments, and then I'm going to ask Apostle Gator for, for closing prayer. Uh, but before I do that, let me just silence this phone here. <laughs> Mary has a closing. Who is that? Robert. Yeah, sorry. Um, let me just comment. Uh, Brian, you're out on for next week. So you'll be yes. preaching next week. And Floyd, the week after that. And Benji Cribb, the week after that. So that's the, the lineup. I'm going to ask Dr. Ken to make some short closing comments and then ask Apostle Gator to close in prayer. Thank you, Dr. I want to reiterate what Rita said, my sister-in-law, that today we celebrate Mother's Day. But we don't honor and appreciate our mothers today and forget her for the remainder of the year. Every day should be Mother's Day for us. Every day should be Mother's Day. Every day, Father's Day. Every day we honor and appreciate our parents. Thank you for sharing, everybody, and God bless. Praise Him. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. We, our Heavenly Father and our God, we thank you once again for this is the day that you have made. As we celebrate mothers throughout the world, we celebrate our very own uh, birth mothers. Then we celebrate our spiritual mothers. We thank you for the gifting that you have placed within them, for the way that they have read their children that today we can call them blessed. We ask for your continuous blessings, your directions within our lives. We pray God that we would continue to live, to be godly examples, whereby the kingdom of God will be increased, continues to bless and prosper our way. We pray now for those who are sick, those who may be diseased among us, those who will be going under uh, the knife for procedures, we pray that you would guide the hands of the skillful surgeons, bring them out whereby they can better glorify your name. Go before us throughout this week, if it is thy will. May the blessings of God Almighty continue to rest and remain with us, henceforth and forevermore. Amen. And thank you, Reverend Gator. Lord bless you and keep you. Zeph, please give our regards to the folks in Kenya. Uh, Floyd and Apostle Gator, give our regards to the folks in the Bahamas. Good to sir. Uh, Dr. Kent, to those in Canada, New York, to those in New York, Jesse, to those in, I'm just kidding. To those in Fayetteville. <laughs> 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 All right, well, the Lord bless you and keep you. Take care. So nice to see all of you again. Bye-bye, everybody. Love you guys. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Enjoy the rest of today, the rest of Mother's Day. Yes. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, baby. Bye -bye. Oh, that child who said that not sent me. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye, Bye. Bye everybody. Bye.